Today's episode is sponsored by our good friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, located in Melbourne, Florida. Check out their Facebook Live auctions on great deals on back issues, comics, and action figures, shipping nationwide. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Codename New 2 Vero 2. Hi, I'm your presenter, Shabu RU. While I'm actually a month behind with the latest offering from IDW and a special one shot. Now, lag the month before, we had a special offering uh, featuring various stories from both Marvel and IDW focused in primarily on G.I. Joe. So last month we looked at, like I was saying, the G.I. Joe edition. So we had various issues and if you haven't, definitely go back and watch that. But IDW, for those that haven't regularly be, been following our channel, for the past, I think, year and a half, we've been getting these wonderful one-shots, starting with the reprint of, let's say, we got, oh, issue, the yearbook number one, which essentially is... Um, issue number one, Lady Doomsday. And then, you know, we go to yearbook number two, as well as we looked at, again, I'm just, for regulars, I'm just repeating a lot of stuff. Several key issues, like issue number 26 and 27 of the Snake Eyes Origin. And last month, we got a special 40th anniversary uh, featuring the iconic issue number 21, done in a very unique manner, featuring... One of the last few things that the late, great Neil Adams was a part of. So this has actually gone more significance with the sad, untimely passing of a comic icon and legend that is Neil Adams. And just a quick note here, go to our good friend Comic Tropes. Uh, Chris there and his famous Comic Tropes YouTube channel did a proper beautifully done tribute to Neil Adams. And if you're following me because of uh, comics and stuff, I mean, Comic Tropes is the guy that kind of inspired me, kind of supported me, and kind of like, you know, gave me that uh, go ahead to go forward with this endeavor. So as, I'm just honored to have uh, him as a good friend and a participant, another participant in this year's upcoming Cobra Convergence. That's right, guys. Cobra Convergence is around the corner. I don't mean to slightly get off topic, but this is a huge event. Not just, like, it is a community event. So we need everybody. And it, there's so many of us out there that are content creators, Facebook pages, uh, Instagram, blogs, you know, you name it. We need to support one another's endeavors so Hasbro gets a greater sense of our community. So if we want stuff done, like, you know, we've seen uh, Hasbro has been listening a little bit. So we got to make our voices heard. And that's how you go about doing it. Plus, it's freaking fun. It's great. This is going to be my, um, I've been official participant for last four years. So I'm just honored to be a part of this wonderful endeavor. So with that aside, um, let's go look at, we're going to do what we always do with these one shots. I'm not going to do a proper panel to panel recap like I do with the comic series. We're just going to do a simple flip through because essentially they're the reprints of the iconic Marvel issues or the IDW. So this month, like I said, uh, last month we got G.I. Joe. So this month we got Cobra. And boy, did they pick out some wonderful issues for this thing and I think everyone's going to be surprised and again uh, I'm not I hate to repeat myself but the most frequent question I get is hey I want to get back into collecting uh, G.I. Joe what should I do IDW is doing all of this as fan service this is the best way to get those uh, significant issues those key issues without going all over the place or spending all kinds of money it's the most cost-effective way to get all those wonderful issues that you so, we also love and treasure. And they're printed in that wonderful high-gloss paper. Uh, it is economically, uh, rationally, it's the best decision, the best way to go about it. 
So check with your local LCS or also go to the IDW website and get these because uh, we all know this is not anything new that IDW sadly will be losing the G.I. Joe title in the next year or so. I think once issue 300 or something like that, um, that's going to be uh, pretty much, it remains to be seen what the future entails. So with that said, let's enjoy it and make the most of this while we have. It's not quantity, it's quality, right? <laughs> All right, so here we go. Oh, just real quick before I dive into flipping through this wonderful presentation, I just wanted to share um, that recently I competed in the Halo 5K Marathon. Basically, Halo is our local non-kill animal shelter. So just a reminder to support your local um, animal shelter and make sure to spay and neuter your pets, just like what Bob Barker tells at the end of Price is Right. So just keep that in mind because, well, you know, we know this is Mental Health Awareness Month and pets are the best thing to combat any type of mental health issues. They're always there loving and supporting us. So, you know, I benefited from that and I just want to let other people know that, hey, um, you know, make a donation to your local, make sure uh, they're non-kill too. kind of push that agenda and also don't support declawing cats. It's That's a terrible sin. And I know there's currently a lot of states are um, getting rid of that. So just keep those in mind. You know, that's what the G.I. Joe community is about, making a difference to everyone's life for the greater good. So without further ado, let's get back into this. Alrighty, so like we do with all of these one-shot offerings from IDW, we're just gonna do a simple flip through of this wonderful presentation. Now check this out, when you pair this with last week's Joe-based offerings, that's a nice image right there. You know, you have those two together, and that's pretty damn sweet right there. I like that. You got it like, you know, equal like Snake Eye, Storm Shadow, Scarlet, Baroness, uh, Zorana, Lady J, Duke, Cobra Commander, you know, you got like a Shipwreck is right there sneaking, so he needs to find someone there. But Roadblock and Destro handling the back, the rear. So that's pretty cool. I like that. That's nice. Okay, so these are the issues that they're pulling from. Uh, G.I. Joe issue number 55, um, Unmaskings. Uh, issue number 57, another great one. 76, we know somebody's going to die in that one. And um, G.I. Joe issue number 280, which we just covered um and i think i spoke about it how um just a segue you know the baronesses i think what they've done recently with the baroness and giving like a more like complete of her background like what makes the baroness the baroness it's like it, that false idealism that goes into um extremism i think that's uh something that is touched upon and I this is one of those as well as her um, untold tales I think that was issue number uh, 252 if I remember um, so those are definitely two Baroness offerings that I highly recommend so let's go and take a look at this one all right so again wonderful Mike Zek cover I love this um, I think this is actually at the graders right now for me so that got sent so we know that um, uh, Destro and Cobra Commander are trapped in the pit, in the you know, in the underdwellings of the pit, um, presumed to be dead, and they stumble upon this big drill that's just sitting there, and um, you know they kind of get out. We have uh, Grunt leaving GI Joe, joining Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jackets. It's funny, like uh, my alma mater, Rutgers is covered in the IDW run, like heavily featured, and Georgia Tech. They're like the big two schools in G.I. Joe, and I think it's kind of cool. I'm an alumni of one of them. Um, but there you go. So we also have, uh, yeah, the fact that they captured uh, Snake Eyes. You know, it's, it's Flint, but it's actually Snake Eyes. And that is actually going heavily into what we are currently covering in G.I. Joe. This, all of this stuff 
as relevant to what is currently, what, to issue number 291, 292, 290. We're dealing with this aspect right now in G.I. Joe. So it's kind of cool. And this is why when I cover G.I. Joe, I spend as much time in the Marvel. It's like going to college. You got to do research, uh, tie in these things. It's just how Larry Hama does this and the storyboarding. You got uh, you got to tip your hat to the guy. He still has it. And uh, we also see some Transformers here. I think that's uh, one of the Insecticons, if I'm correct. I don't know. But we also see that, you know, the, the what is going to eventually become the Cobra Civil War, the, all the underprintings, under the foundation is being laid. We got half the, you know, what, Serpentor taking over and just using to uh, the advantage now that Cobra Commander is presumed dead. So he's going forward with his operations. And, of course, we see the Destro and Cobra Commander uh, this is cool because we get a little bit of Cobra Commander's backstory finally. So that's what made this really interesting back in the day. Like, you know, we see that. Of course, we see uh, the Crimson Twins here. Uh, them checking out Snake Eye's real face and how grotesque and hideous it is. A nice shot of the Baroness right there. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> We find out that Cobra Commander is a used car salesman at one time, and he's really good with paperwork. You got to be a smart guy to be a Cobra Commander, you know, to do what he does. And it's during this police stop we find out that Billy is still alive. See a nice kill shot here with the low light. That's pretty cool. Again, the officer telling Cobra Commander what happened with Billy. Um... We also see what's still going on out there with, uh, I think this is uh, Leatherneck <laughs> and uh, in Incognito and uh, Baroness is like, oh, that's not a standard issued weapon. He's like, oh, no, I took it. He's like, oh, well, that be in that case, you're the leader. <laughs> that's pretty funny. So they're going to rescue uh, Snake Eyes. And then, of course, we get the a little bit more of the Snake Eyes backstory stalker we also just looked at this remember guys uh we found out a little bit of tommy rashikage's time in vietnam and how stalker was the last one to join that infamous group oh wow like i love modern idw because it takes you back to all of this good stuff wow we see, see Snake Eyes is sacrificing himself and Stalker's like, no, no, like, you know, because he's thinking about what's currently going on and what transpired in Vietnam. Well, you know, with Tommy coming, for, like, he's seen this before, kind of like, like, oh, no, like, and what happened to Snake Eyes after that? And the big boom, they presume, you know, Snake Eyes made the ultimate sacrifice. And we see Cobra Commander. We're ending that Cobra Commander is by the side of Billy. He's kind of like, you know what? I'm a terrible father. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> and uh, how he's going to, you know, change. Strange Bedfellows. Now, side by side with Destro. Another good selection. Uh, we got a Rob Wagner and Kim DeMuller of... Uh, cover here i like this like because it is the iron grenadiers before they were the iron grenadiers so we get a i mean this is isn't a cobra issue more so a mars issue if you think about it really and uh look at that we got a nice shot of lady J. you know <laughs> that's pretty funny but again this involves the gi joe as the international um Force, like you know, action force. Yeah, the, basically, this is an action force issue. That's another thing that makes this in Strange Bedfellows. That's what I feel uh, when I look back at this issue. We see that um, they find out, you know, they found out that Destro has escaped and made his way back to resurface, and he's heading back to 
uh, his native homeland of Scotland. So being that they're covert operations, we got Lady J, who we recall from the G.I. Joe cartoon is supposed to be Destro's cousin, but you know, that's not that's not a canon, you know, that was just a Sunbow episode, but that's just something to keep note of. And kind of fun an overall G.I. Joe lore a little bit. So they're heading over to the UK and they're gonna meet up with the British intelligence, you know, agency. And we find them meeting few it's the funny thing about me is my neighbor is British. Like he lives two houses down. Darren is like, uh, and he always watches the house when I'm gone. He comes in, takes care of the cats, and it's just funny because you know the relationship between British and India. Like you know, my grandparents are Indian, so that <laughs> it's just funny how it takes a few generation those feelings um, are gone, and it should be like you know. Um, but I, the guy is an awesome dude. So we see him meeting up with. Uh, his the leader of his security forces so this guy would be to the equivalent of who should I pay Voltar let's just say that for now but um, you know what would be Mars and they're wearing their traditional Scottish kilts and stuff so I think that's another Destro Casa de Destro over here and we see that, oh, there's an imposter sitting at the table. Who? And he's calling the real Destro an imposter. And the real Destro gets arrested and sent because this, the imposter Destro said that somebody's going to come pretending to be me. So he, uh, he set up the, um, the ruse, so to speak, you know, for when the real Destro does in fact show up. And we see that, uh, Lady J has to go undercover to get in. So now the goal is to spring Destro out. And uh, because the most important thing going on in this issue is the plans for the deadly uh, Terradrome. So the Terradrome is the thing that G.I. Joe is afraid of. And the Terradrome is going to be interesting because more so than the G.I. Joe headquarters, because we saw in, I think, issue 11 that what we bought as a toy and what we've seen in Sunbow isn't the case. Those are supposed to be modular. Like you could take them around and they pop up and build. And the co the, the Terradrome was advertised as that in the comic books. So it's a contrast between the G.I. Joe headquarters and the Terradrome. When in fact, they're supposed to do the same thing. All right, so they free Destro and then they go back to... Um, you know, I would, there, it's the SAS that they work with. I thought it was the Royal Air Force. So this is the elite unit of the Royal Air Force. Um, just for, um, you know, to compare, like, they're, they're special forces. Kind of like the Navy, Navy SEALs, so to speak. Um, they pull out this glider because of Destro's security system of detecting uh, anything that is motorized or produces heat. So that's why they employ this uh, World War II aircraft to kind of glide in um, to Casa Destro's security to kind of like um, dodge that. But again, we see, you know, that they did get alerted to the fact that there's an incoming, that something's going down and all hands on deck, alarm is being sound. Uh, Flynn and the, uh, I guess the British Flint equivalent guy, <laughs> They're outside in the Jeep uh, support, and we see, like, you know, um, the whole defense of the castle is being undertaken. Um, they have to sacrifice the glider, but, you know, Destro and um, Lady J are already on the ground, and Destro is making his way because he knows, of course, this is his freaking castle, and he's a designer. So he makes his way in and finds that, hey, the the impersonating Destro is after the same thing, the plans to the terror drone. So, you know, he kind of cuts him off there, you know, in a big uh, display of which one's the real Destro. <laughs> and we find out that Destro is none other than major blood. And of course, at, at this point, 
you know, we get a glimpse of Destro's honor. I like that. And that plays into future episodes as well that, you know, Destro has a code of conduct and, and a, a code of honor that he will not cross. So even though he, like, they're surround GI, I mean, Flint and Lady J are surrounded by enemies. Destro lets him walk, lets them walk away scot free because honoring that um, uh, commitment that he made that, hey, you know, when this is over, you could get a walk away. We'll both go our separate ways. So he kind of, uh, I think that's kind of cool. I, I like that. That's something that makes Destro that much more endearing despite being a bad guy. The next one, whoa boy, this is bringing the end of the probably one of the, if not the best story arcs, the Cobra Civil War, issue number 76. And we got a Bob McCloud and uh, Ron Wagner cover. We got Roadblock, Flint, and Hawk kind of like, you know, with flames around them. I like this cover. This is a pretty kick-ass cover. All's fair. And, you know, we segue just from that issue. We segue to Destro and the Iron Grenadiers making their appearance. Uh, last issue, we see them arriving um, off the coast of Cobra Island and kind of like laying back, surveying the situation. Very smart. Uh, another thing I love about Destro is very calculating, doesn't take risks. And we also get a sense of how unlike Cobra Commander, he values his soldiers. And like, you know, he, uh, they're adhering to him because of his uh, consideration in their well-being and in their loyalty. He really values that. So again, for a bad guy, he end up really liking Destro, which is kind of cool. All right, so we continue on with the issue and we see a little cat fight going on. Oh, I mean, well, we have a, uh, Flynn and that, uh, I guess they're kind of like surveying what's going on. So, you know, we have the main force on on land, uh, you know, working with Sepentor. But behind the scenes, as all regulars know, we have Flynn and his group like going through underground tunnels, kind of like rendezvousing with the rest of the guys. And they make friends with the, the local there, the guy who's, uh, what's his name? got to reread this issue. But yeah, the, some guy that they found on the island who's been who knows all the little nooks and crannies and helps them escape um being detected. And like I said there's a cat fight going on where Zarana and the Baroness, a little bit of jealousy that, you know, Fred 7 or the quote-unquote Cobra commander um is favoring one or the other and they're using all of their tricks to kind of seduce him into and we have Baroness tied up, you know, that iconic cover of issue number 75, which I have graded and mount mounted behind me. I love that cover, you know. Um, we got a nice picture of the Baroness there. <laughs> I like this picture of her, like, <laughs> driving around, like, being tied up. How demeaning is that? That's terrible. And we see that one of the bats has a, like, old-fashioned camcorder that, you know, Dad used to have filming birthdays mount on top of a bat of all things that's how ridiculous is that but again like you know uh the i love going through these and that's why these are such a great value is that the paper that they use and how it feels and the fact that you could actually enjoy these issues once again without worrying about uh, messing them up or getting anything on it like um i don't foresee these having any significant value besides the value that they bring to us as a reader and a fan that you know i have these issues graded and properly put away and preserved for my own benefit and i highly recommend you guys doing that with your original marvel runs that's why i do these comic recaps and then these comic book unboxings to show you that hey it is fun to go about doing this it is a little bit I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you, it's expensive, not but not too bad. It's just like if you, if you're smart and space things out correctly, anybody could do it. And I recommend like uh, you know going with PGX and EGS uh, companies respectively. Uh, out of all the grading companies, uh, I think those are the easiest to deal with. And um, 
you know, the end result product is worthwhile, especially with EGS, with those custom labels. Um, so going back to the action, we see like, you know, a little bit of skirmish going on. Crocmaster joins in and it's kind of funny having uh, Rakondo and Crocmaster on the same side. You know, think about that. Um, that's pretty cool. And we see that Flint's team eventually makes it to the air base, which has now been devastated through all the fighting. They see the tracks and they know that um, Destro is also there. And he's kind of like coming in from like, which direction. I like that Tunnel Rat's like basically like sniffing everything out and saying, oh, this is what's going on. They're going, this team is going this way. That team is going that way. And this is what's going to happen. And we see that there is a fighting going on between uh, Cobra and G.I. Joe, uh, Serpentor's forces. And then um, we finally see that Destro shows up to the party and we see... Uh, Fred Seven, Cobra Commander, like, you know, shit in his pants, literally. And here is an important scene. Zartan runs off and saying, hey, I got to do everything myself. And we know what's going to happen. And here we go. The iconic panels that's going to end the... I guess Larry Hammer was really happy to do this. In a way, this is what his feelings were towards the character of Serpentor and the whole... Uh, season two of Arise, Serpentor Arise. I mean, in a swooping few panels, you got the general idea of what he thought of uh, Hasbro's direction, so to speak. And I, I think that's a metaphor. That's what this these panels are. Th this is a metaphor for what Larry Hama was feeling, the direction G.I. Joe was going. That's it in a nutshell right there, folks. And we see as, as soon as that arrow kills Serpentor, <laughs> Dr. Mindbender comes like, hey, let's form a truce. Goes over to Fred Seven. Hey, guess what? We're friends now. And of course, what does Destro want? What does he want in all of this? And he just makes one demand. Give me my woman. So, of course, Mindbender is like, hey, I'm happy to do that here. Good riddance. Like, you know. And Destro quietly leaves and that ends issue number 76. And now we we did the recap of this 280. Like I told you um, in the beginning, this is actually a very good because it ties back to issue number 54 in that iconic fight. And I, I said that during the recap of this issue. Like you go back into that and you realize that there is so much value. And the cool thing is the Baron is getting a new appreciation for wild weasel because this kind of changes while the uh, perception of wild like the name wild weasel like you get this perception but in these few panels that we see here that perception is totally different from what the guy actually is like yes he is you know a mercenary essentially but there's a code of honor and conduct that he goes about especially after his duel with ace like he admires ace i mean he is going to, they, they both admire each other. And it, this kind of like adds to those notions. And we see like, you know, after the end of that fight, he's, you know, his plane is all shot up and he's basically landing this thing on its belly and um, prepare for a emergency landing. They, you know, they're about a kind of like uh, we saw in that movie Rush, like, you know, the, they're so close to being hit with, you know, the, the, close to the gas lines, so everything is going to blow and they got to cut the harness. It's just like that movie Rush with uh, um, Ricky Loud, you know, if you guys know what I'm talking about, um, you know, they got they had trouble getting her out, but they finally get her out the last second. The plane explodes and I think, um, who's the drawer, illustrator? I think, it, yeah, Ron, jo this is a Ron Joseph drawn I could tell I just, his name was kind of slipping my tongue for a second. But yeah, this is totally Ron Joseph style. Like, you know, when you pick this issue up, that's the first thing you notice. I like how he does the draws the Baroness to Wild Weasel. We get a look at what he actually looks like. You see the Night Raven there, you know. We see that, you know, she's being, after escaping death, she is immediately called and, like, sent off to... Uh, 
I think she's going to France and has to um, rendezvous with uh, Major Blood, who's taking matters in his own hands. There's a, you know, a, who's the, uh, I got him thinking, I can't remember this. They're trying to convince, I think it's, uh, oh, let's see. Yeah, the, yeah, they're they're trying to influence the Peruvian um, government, um, the president, so to speak. So I think that the Major Blood was in charge of kidnapping or like you know assassinating somebody that's uh, running for office and kind of like you know hey we're gonna knock this dude off you carry out what we want. But it's not simple as that. The Major Blood has his own intentions and he's kind of like making Cobra to be the scapegoat and trying to cash in on kind of unrest. So um, that's where Baroness has to step in and kind of like, hey, this is not our objective. You know, we're not just killing senselessly. We have an objective to achieve and, you know, you need to like take your, because he's a mercenary. He's looking out for, an, you know, number uno right there and baroness is kind of like at the end she's the hero in this whole thing because she's saving these uh, people from being killed so we see that like just like we're talking about with destro that there is some code that baroness has that you know she actually does uh she's not just killing indiscriminately or not doing these things you know just to commit harm. There's some sickos and villains out there that just enjoy seeing people hurt and doing bad stuff where Baroness still has like, you know, lines that she will not cross and that she is willing to stand up for. So again, Ron does a great job in these panels and showcasing a more deep dive into who the Baroness is. And I, th and I think uh, that's pretty cool. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up with that. Again, I think this was cover B. Yeah, so I ended up getting cover A and I think the RI cover for this. Yeah, it's hanging up on the wall. So, um, yeah, this is a, another great presentation and definitely something that you should add to your collection. You know, whether you have all these issues I've stated before, they are worthwhile in picking up. I am really enjoying it. And it just shows that IDW is truly a collection of fellow fans because i mean they're doing this for the fandom you know knowing that even though the no all everybody in that office knows that you know th this is coming to an end when they're still putting out this stuff for the fans you gotta tip your hat like that must be that's pretty awesome of them and really admi admirable so without without uh, further ado this is shabu are you thank you for this uh, one shot flip through and we'll see you in the next episode of Codename New to Vero 2. Have a good one.